Welcome to Electron Line. One of the amazing properties of water is that it has an extremely high heat capacity. I don't know of any substances that have a higher heat capacity than water, there may be one or two that I'm not aware of, but it has a really high heat capacity. Matter of fact, the heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram per centigrade degree or 40, 186 joules per kilogram of water per Kelvin. Compared to like metals, that is almost a 10 to 1 ratio. Aluminum has a high heat capacity for, me for a metal, but it's only 150 heat capacity of water. Sand, rock, any of these other substances have lower heat capacities on water. And that's an extremely important part of life on Earth because almost three quarters of the surface of the Earth is covered by water, by oceans mostly, by lakes, by inland seas, by rivers, and so forth. And water having that really high heat capacity is able to temper the climate tremendously. If, for example, there was much less water on the Earth, the swings between summer and winter would be enormous, would make it very difficult for life to exist on Earth. And even if there were lots of oceans like there are today, but if the heat capacity of water was only a small fraction of what it is now, then the oceans would heat up tremendously in the summertime and get really cold in the wintertime and freeze over and you would have a tremendous high temperature swing if it wasn't for the fact that the large oceans of the Earth really are the thermostats of the world. In the summer, they can absorb a lot of heat without rising very much in temperature. In the winter, they can give off a lot of heat and keep the world from freezing and by not cooling down very much in temperature. So the waters are really big heat sinks and all due to the fact that water has a very high heat capacity. Now, the question is, why does it do so? Why does it have such high heat capacity? Well, I try to give you a feel here. You can see that water molecules have a lot of hydrogen bonding. Between every oxygen, there'll be two hydrogen bonds with other two molecules, and it forms all these structures. Now, when water is, when, uh, water is in, the, in the liquid phase rather than the solid phase, molecules can move from one to the other, but there's still these very strong hydrogen bonds between all the various molecules in three dimensions. And so as you're adding uh, heat to water, and so that heat would then cause the molecules to vibrate more violently because of the increase in temperature, a lot of that heat, a lot of that energy that's, that's given to water is actually used to try and break the bonds rather than make the molecules vibrate more. So vibration or kinetic energy is associated with temperature. And the more they vibrate, the higher the temperature. But if a lot of the energy that's dumped into the water is used to break the hydrogen bonds, then less energy then is available to actually cause the molecules to vibrate more. So water can therefore absorb way more heat than other substances. Other substances are much more reactive by increasing, temp by increasing heat or energy by making the molecules vibrate more and have the temperature rise more quickly. Water is not the case. A vast majority of the energy is used to break the hydrogen bonds, thus keeping the rise in temperature down, thus keeping the increase in vibration down from the water, and hence, water has a very high heat capacity. Again, that very special structure of water, meaning it has two hydrogens and two free electron pairs to do the hydrogen bonding makes it just perfect for all these great properties that make water such a special substance, allowing life on Earth to exist and to thrive the way it does. So, number two, high heat capacity. On to number three on the next video.